Hi everyone, welcome to the Inner Reset talk show. My name is Seema Luthra. This is a talk show about bold choices, deep learnings and charting your own unique course through life. In this show, we will be talking about the big questions about life, career, success, relationships and re-looking at the challenges that we face and how we can transform those. I will be bringing on change makers that I admire and talking about the intimate side of their journey. How did they change their addictions, suicide, anxiety? How did they transform from all these experiences to show up as the people that they are today? The experience of inner transformation is not the same for everyone, but the impact it has will be with you for the rest of your life, metamorphosing you into a truer, more authentic version of yourself. I mean, the answer is yes, right? There's a massive connection between the inner and the outer. And yet I would say most people in the world are relatively unaware of their internal state. Without self-awareness, we don't, we don't know um, how our inner state, our, our inner chatter, our inner beliefs, our past experiences, we don't know how any of that is impacting our day-to-day -day interactions or our decisions. So self-awareness is a really critical skill, I would say, whether you're in a leadership position or even if you're just starting out in your career. Hi everyone, welcome to episode four of The Inner Reset. I am excited to have you here today. Today I'm excited to present to you my conversation with Rashmir Balasubramaniam. So they say that life is about the journey and not the destination. And Rashmir's life certainly embodies this philosophy. With over 25 years of experience working across industries from investment banking to global health and development and across countries from East Africa, India, the US and the UK, Rashmir's expertise lies in building trust across different cultures, regions and disciplines. So we are really lucky to have her here with such a breadth of experience and having done so many different roles and careers. Currently, Rashmir is an executive leadership coach and a strategic consultant for leaders pioneering in social and systems change. Enjoy this conversation. One of the things which I've been hearing a lot about is imposter syndrome, and especially for someone who moved between so many careers. How did you go into a new um, career or, you know, global health and policy, like as someone who's coming in from a completely different field? And, and how did you navigate that? And then even going into coaching, like, I feel like you, you would have been really bold to take such decisions and, you know, move your career so many times. You know, sometimes you can't make a change until the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of changing. So for me, just talking about that switch from investment banking into the social sector, I was ready to make that switch because I knew that I couldn't and didn't want to be in a place that wasn't mission driven or impact oriented in some way anymore. And it was great for a while, but it, but I was just ready to make that switch. What wasn't clear initially was how to make that switch. And at that time, so this was the 90s in London, the international development sector, the global health sector was considered very nepotistic. Frankly, it probably still is. So in other words, it's difficult to get into it unless you know someone already in that space. And a very interesting thing happened because initially I was finding that people were looking at my background, particularly my finance background, and and really being turned off by it, right? So a lot of people were making assumptions about who I was because I'd, I'd done finance and investment banking. So they had their assumptions about what people were like in that space. And they were doing this before they even met me. So I didn't have a chance, you know, to put it right or to, to give them an indication of who I really was and what I might bring to the space. And so eventually I thought, okay, this is really interesting. I, something, I need to try something a little bit different. And so I took a risk and I, I threw my hat in the ring for a finance job that I, I, I figured was probably going to bore me to tears. And so I did that um, and it led me to a first job with the International Planned Parenthood Federation, which is kind of a big, large NGO focused on family planning and reproductive health. It was totally worth taking that risk because within six months, so the, the manager of one of the projects that I was doing the finance work for had left 
they didn't want to hire anyone new because there was only a little bit of time left to run on this USAID funded um, project. And so they asked me to take on that managerial position. But here's the catch. This is classic in the nonprofit sector, right? They said, we want you to take on the managerial role, but we can't bring anyone in to do the finance stuff. So you've got to do both jobs. So, so the irony of it was I ended up working investment banking hours in this nonprofit trying to do two jobs at once, which was fine. It was, it was, you know, perfectly doable. It was a lot of hard work, but it was also just very rewarding. It was me learning a lot and it gave me insight and exposure into how, how the sector worked. So just to come back to your original question, you know, I mean, I guess maybe there is a little bit of courage involved because sometimes you have to be willing to take the risk. Anyone going into a different industry, like everyone there feels like they know a lot more. They they have a lot more years of experience. You're coming in from a different space. You're coming in with a different perspective. You see things very differently. So how do you bridge the gap, so to speak? People often worry about stepping into new spaces. Um, Mm -hmm. And yet the freshness of perspective, I mean, what you're alluding to and speaking to is, you know, because you see things differently, you bring a new perspective. And that's very, very valuable, especially in places that need to change or want to change or are trying to innovate. So the first thing is recognizing that your perspective and your different experience has value. And then the second thing I would say, I mean, a key criteria for me is respect. Because when you come in and if you have a different perspective, but you're, you think you know it all, or you think your, your perspective is more valuable than someone else's, right? That's disrespectful to the existing system, the existing knowledge set, the existing experience base in the organization or industry that you're in. But if you come in sort of thinking, okay, there is knowledge and experience and value here, And maybe they're a little stuck in some ways just because this is how they've been doing it the whole time. But but my freshness has value, right? So maybe I can ask questions in a way that will help create a bit more openness in people, that will help them start to see things differently. Maybe I could, um, you know, talk to people and learn from them in order to kind of, you know, tap into their expertise and wisdom and then see what the combination of my fresh perspectives with their existing perspectives and experience might might bring. So respect for me is a key thing when you're switching um, organizations or sectors. And respect is such a powerful thing because it stuns me how often there's disrespect in organizations, not intentionally, but just because people don't take time to look, to listen, to, you know, to see the gifts and the wisdom and the experience in the other. But when we do that, it can be incredibly transformative. I I wanted to kind of uh, ask you about the the connection between your internal environment and the impact you can have in the outside world. I mean, the answer is yes, right? There's a massive connection between the inner and the outer. And yet I would say most people in the world are relatively unaware of their internal state. I mean, there's a range of people that some people are a bit more reflective and contemplative than others, but especially it's it's really interesting actually working with leaders. It's it's really fascinating to notice which ones have high self-awareness and which ones don't. And if they don't have high self-awareness, that's probably the most important thing to work on first. Because without self-awareness, we don't, we don't know um, how our inner state, our, our inner chatter, our inner beliefs, um, our past experiences, we don't know how any of that is impacting our day-to-day interactions or our decisions. So self-awareness is a really critical skill, I would say, whether you're in a leadership position or even if you're just starting out in your career, pay attention to to who you are, to what what your thoughts are, to what you're feeling. You know, I mean, this is why mindfulness and meditation is so important because, um, you know, no matter what you do in the world, it helps build the skills and the capacity to be more aware of what's going on inside of us. And once we have that awareness, we have greater inner spaciousness, which allows us to see what's happening and why, and we have greater ability to make choices and not just to act out of 
you know, a reactive position or a default kind of reaction. Instead, we might be able to say, okay, wait a sec. I can see that this past experience is actually impacting how I'm affect, you know, how I'm thinking about and feeling about this current situation, even though it's different, different person, different organization. So let me step back and say, okay, what, what really wants to happen here? What's the purposeful outcome? And where and how can I choose to act or not act at all in a way that will affect that greater um, purposeful outcome? So yes, to your, to your question, I would say self-awareness and self-awareness about our inner state is absolutely critical to our being effective in the world, whether it's in our work or whether it's in our personal lives. The other thing I would say is if we don't have awareness of that inner state, it's what you were speaking to at the beginning, right? About getting in touch with your inner wisdom, because the answers are always there. And the answers may not be, you know, a clear answer. The answer may actually be a question that's pointing you in the direction of the answer or of the next step or of the next decision. And so when we have a bit more self-awareness and a bit more inner spaciousness, that's when we create the ability to tap into our own inner wisdom. And we all have access to that. It doesn't matter how old we are, right? It doesn't matter how much experience we do or don't have. We all have access to incredible wisdom, but we do need to take the time to be in silence, to cultivate self-awareness in order to be able to tap into that. So there is a massive connection. Um, this is one of the things as well, just, just very quickly, that I, that I realized when I was working in the global health and global development space. We spent a lot of time focused on, you know, we want to make the world better, right? Whether it's on the issue of malaria or water and sanitation or some, some other topic. But the focus often is, is on how do we change other people? How do we get them to do something yeah. or how do we get them to stop doing something and you know what what i realized is that actually we're we're not taking enough time most of us that are working in change to say well how am i contributing to this what wow. what what do i truly have the ability to change right because all we can really ever change is ourselves but but if we change ourselves then what else becomes possible? And that, I mean, I think a lot of people get that in the context of personal relationships, because you can quite often see, you know, in the context of our family relationships or relationships with friends, how taking the time to change ourselves can really transform the dynamics with people close to us. We don't always make the connection between inner change and outer change in the workplace. And yet it's clearly there again through relationships, but I would say even beyond relationships, right? So if we are so intently focused on creating change in the world that we're bringing stress, um, we're bringing you know, an attitude of I know best or whatever we might be bringing with us, we might miss the, the possibilities and the potential that exist for change. We might miss what is trying to be, trying to emerge or could emerge because we're so focused on that one path that we've chosen or we've decided is, is the best approach. And we certainly will miss the contributions that the other people that are involved have to make. And so this shift of shifting ourselves can change a lot in the workplace and particularly in the world of social change. And one of the, the, the things that I particularly encourage people to, to do is to lighten up. And I have to remind myself to do this, right? Because I can get overly serious a lot of the time as well. But when we lighten up, we, we open possibilities, we bring an attitude of playfulness and that in turn unleashes potential and unleashes creativity because suddenly it, we're not fixed on one thing, but we're open to, to the possibilities that are emerging in any given moment. And we create the, the environment in which other people can bring their selves to bear in a whole way and then work together to, you know, to come up with something that maybe none of us would have thought of. The Inner Reset is brought to you by Hometree Coworking, a co-working space I co-founded. Hometree is Sri Lanka's first co-working space dedicated to mindfulness at work. At Hometree, we aim to reinvent the way we work in the post-pandemic world by focusing on consciousness, community and co-creation in the new normal. We're trying out a range of ways to bring mindfulness into how we work. One of them is through online deep work sprints 
where we combine mindfulness techniques with productivity science to, uh, to help us get better at what we do and to help us do our best work. More importantly, Home Tree is an ever-growing community of creatives, entrepreneurs and change makers who support each other in co-creating their wildest dreams. At Home Tree, we take pride in aspiring towards a new world of work where your inner being directs what you do in the outer world. To find out about our latest programs, you can go to our Instagram page.